All right, let's start with a simplifying uh, example. And this is a super great example because I'm going to demonstrate lots of techniques in this. Um, and then, of course, the techniques, uh, that's what you're learning here are the different techniques because um, these are all going to be different. So it's not like, you know, if you learn just uh, how to simplify one expression, you'll have another one just like it because they're all going to be different. So the trick is to learn the techniques and then to know how to apply the techniques and probably more importantly when to apply the techniques. So we want to simplify this. Now first of all I want you to notice that there is no equals here. So this is not a proof because there's nothing on the right hand side that we're trying to get it to equal. This is just uh, an expression that we're going to simplify. So when we're all done, hopefully at the very bottom, we will have something that looks a whole lot simpler than this. So the first thing I'm going to start with is um, working on, and, and I'll do this just one step at a time so you can see what I'm doing here. So see here how I have the cosine of a negative angle or negative arc? So I'm going to use my negative identity here and I'm going to change that. So now we have tangent and we still have sine x plus cotangent x. And so now I can substitute the cosine of a negative angle is equal to the cosine of the same angle in the positive direction. All right, so I use that one. Um, the next thing I want to do is I want to, I don't know how to um, define this, but we want to change things into change. There's uh, the Greek symbol delta, that means change. We want to change things into sine and cosine. So now I can take this tangent, and tangent is sine, oops, I forgot my x is here. I do that all the time. So tangent is sine over cosine, and then we still have sine. Now cotangent, well that's going to be cosine over sine, and then I still have cosine here, and I'm going to go ahead and put that over 1. All right, so next thing I want to do now is I want to multiply these together. Order of operations say you multiply before you add. So let's go ahead and do that. Notice how I'm recopying all the parts every time and just changing the parts that I'm working on. Uh, half of the idea of doing a simplification or a proof is how you present it. So you're going to work uh, downward and you're going to do, um, you don't necessarily have to do just one step at a time, um, although I'm doing one step at a time to be able to show you this, um, but the order and the neatness is super important here. Alright, let's get back to the multiplying. So when I multiply these two fractions, I multiply across. So cosine times cosine is cosine squared, and this is over already looking simpler, isn't it? Alright, so now the next step I want to do is I want to add, but in order to add, that's a semicolon there, I need a common denominator. Alright, and so let me show you what that looks like. So sine x over cosine x. So to get a common denominator here, common denominator has got to be, see this is over 1, sine, so I can multiply this by sine x over sine x, and I've still got this term right here. Alright, so there's my common denominator, now let's multiply that out, and um, uh, we need more paper here. Gosh, I hate to erase. Um, I'm going to erase. Nope, we're not going to erase. We'll start a new page. All right, so we had sine x over cosine x, and then here we have sine. We'll go ahead and multiply this together. So now that becomes sine squared x over sine x, and then this term was cosine squared x over sine x. There we go. So that's multiplied together. 
So now I'm ready, since I have a common denominator, now I'm ready to do that add. I'm going to do that step right there. So I have sine x, cosine x. And when I add these together, remember you add the numerators over your denominator. All right, now so this should look familiar right here. Cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. So I'm going to substitute, substitute what we call a basic identity. In this case, it's um, for sine squared plus cosine squared. And you know that that is 1. So let's make that substitution. So this becomes 1 over sine x. Now I'm ready to multiply these two fractions together. So we got more multiplying here. Multiply. And then when I multiply, multiplying across, I have sine x times 1 over cosine x times sine x. And now um, I have a sine x in the numerator and the denominator, so I can reduce. running out of room here, so we're just going to pretend we're going to continue it right over here. So um, I end up with 1 over cosine x, and now I'm going to do another substitution. 1 over cosine x is the same as secant x. So there we have taken that expression. We have uh, implemented the, all of these uh, techniques here and we have simplified that to secant x. And before I close here, I just want to say that when you do this, you do, you do not have to write all this stuff on the right. You do not need to do that for your simplification or your proof. Um, I'm doing it, um, of course, for your note-taking purposes so you can see what each step is along the way. Um, and if you want to do that in your notes, obviously that's perfectly fine. It helps you learn. Um, but uh, on a test or quiz, that, that part is not necessary.